to our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Here in honor of the Pastor Williams, Lady Williams, our preacher for tonight. We tell God thank you for allowing us just to be back in the house of prayer one more time. Huh? We thank you for allowing us to be in another youth revival. Huh? The God that we serve, I say he's good, he's mighty, mighty good. We won't take nothing for our Christian journey, so we're going to begin our service tonight. And we're going to ask you to help us just to lift up the name of Jesus. Huh? I said I was in the bathroom this morning getting ready, and I said, heard women come through. Huh? Kept on getting uh, uh, ready, and I said, when I got thought through, I, let me look out here and see what's happening. I said, just a little breeze coming on through. I said, but God, I said aloud, I said, got a call every time I thought it was. I said, don't worry, it's a Passover. The rain of God here is almost gone. I said, I tell God, thank you, huh? I said, because I said a few weeks ago, I'm all about you. I was in that storm, huh? And I began to look at them trees, so I said, but God allowed us huh, to make it here safe and sound tonight. So tonight we came to lift him up. Huh? We came to give him praise. So can't nobody, nobody can do us like Jesus. Huh? So let us get into the service huh? and give God some praise. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. What's the matter with Jesus? Thank you. 
right now, we're going to leave space. Uh, maybe somebody desires to testify, huh? Never know, huh? And so if you desire her uh, and desire to testify, we'll leave space right now, huh? To say something for the Lord, huh? You know, I tell God, thank you just for my being here, huh? You know, I said because, uh, I said, when the trees begin to fall, huh? I've noticed the night, I've been to this night, huh? You know, I said, I began to say, God, I thank you got the trees in my yard. I, I said, God, I thank you because it could have been me, huh? Yeah. You know, and I said, I'm going to get a look how they fell on those houses. And I said, God, I just want to tell you thank you. Yeah. I saw somebody lost their lives. I said, well, God, it could have been me, huh? Yeah. I said, but not so, huh? People in homes, they got trees coming to the roof, huh? Yeah. I said, nobody but God. Yeah. I owe God praise. Yeah. I said, I tell God, thank you. I said, when they told me, huh? They were down in Roseville, huh?
God. I can be like, thank God just for being who he is. Yes. Because he saved me one day yes. when I was a little small child. Yes. Didn't know anything about him. Yes. And I said, he kept me all these years. Yes. I said, Lord is good. He's worthy to be praised. Yes. I said, I look around and see all that he's doing in my life. Now look around and see what he's doing in others' life. And I said, Lord, I thank you for that also. Yes. That's because it's good just to be able to see all the good things that he's done. Not only for myself, but for yes. others that are around. And I said, I know he's got another blessing on the way. Yes. Not just for me. I said, but he has a blessing on the way. Yes. One that we won't be able to understand. And I said, all we got to do is sit and wait on it. So I'm asking yes. everyone to look for a prayer. Oh, you can take a prayer for me. Continue praying for the Kent family. Yes. Uh, that we'll be what the Lord will have us to be. And we'll continue to pray for you. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yes, now I'm going to testimony. And I said, I know there's more in the house. So, but that's all right. We'll move on. Huh? Y'all you. hold it till y'all get to your next destination. Huh? If you don't wait till you get into your house, so pray, huh? You can telephone call somebody. Amen. 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 I said, God is good. I, I said, it's worthy to be prayed. I'm going to ask right now, if there is a choir, huh? if they desire her, uh, that's all right. That's all right. We got uh, these men sitting right on the front. God's always got some rain to the bush. Amen. And I said, we will bring some music into the house. So, so uh, we got at least one, two, three, four male choir members and one back yonder. That's five. And I said, so we can sing to the glory of God. So we're going to ask me a choir, huh? It's all right. We have work us one to another. Huh? We're going to ask them uh, to come up and prepare yeah, themselves. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Who? The musician's here. He's just going to sing. Oh, come on up. Let me help y'all sing. I mean, we're working together in, in this vineyard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, Keep on hiding. Let him keep on hiding. Keep on hiding. Let him keep on hiding. <laughs> You know, I'm just going to do this, God, just like this. All the men in the house, come on up, take a question. All the men in the house, come on up, take a question. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, sure it's not, you owe me anyway, so you, you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, uh, call, call it due tonight, so we'll be calling it even, so you know, I need to remember that no man's going to sing behind the back of the when it's time to do this spiritual. I said, God, I like this, I really do. I said, if somebody needs a tambourine, I'd be happy to give them one, so you know, we can make music in the day. I said, this is black history month. Remember our beginnings, when I came into the church, they had scrub boards and you know, and I saw somebody with a, a wash tub or a, uh, some strings in it and a stick. I remember that. I said, so, you know, we, we got to have no people with I said, but we'll use what we got Amen. until Amen. something else comes. I, I said, God is good and he's worthy to be praised. I, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. I, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I, I said, right now, we're going to ask the choir to give us uh, an opening selection. Huh? And after the opening selection, we're gonna ask uh, uh we're gonna ask Sister uh, Debbie, prepare yourself for prayer, and we're gonna ask Sister Heaven to get us a scripture. Okay. Um, prepare yourself. All right. And, 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 and after we do that, we're we'll going to, uh, and, I, and I'm going to get Mother Nova helper, but Sister Indy's going to come up and get a welcome after we get this next song. So prepare, your, prepare yourself to get that. It's, it's a youth revival. Amen. And the Bible says, train them up. 
And I believe in doing what the Bible says. So tonight we're going to do what just says the Lord. So after the choir, somebody let the door. Somebody let the door. After the choir gives a selection of their choosers, I said we have prayer by Sister Pippin, Pip and then I said a scripture by Sister Heaven. Same one. I come on to tell you what Jesus said. I come on to tell you what Jesus said. I come on to tell you what Jesus said. He said, 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 He said,
Forever so 
you know, the one who cares for me. Last year at this time, I was uh, laid up in the hospital. I had to, to, to uh, let you know, uh, Mother Dot Knight came and, and let you know that I, I couldn't be here. Uh, but guess what? <laughs> On last week, guess where I was? Laid up in the hospital. <laughs> but God saw fit. Hallelujah. God saw fit yes, yes. to make a way for me to be oh, here on tonight. Yes. And I truly thank God for his gracious, gracious, and loving blessing. He is so good to me. Yes, I thank him all the time for all that he has done and for his, his goodness. How many of you thank him for his goodness? Amen. Is he good for you all yes. gives us grace yes, and mercy yes. and allows us to run on and see what the end is going to be. Yes. Uh, I tell you, I'm going to serve him until he calls me home. Yes. When I stand before him, I want to know that I have poured out all that he has given me in his service. I want to have one bit left over. I want to give all that he's given me in service unto him. Truly, truly God is good on this evening. Will you uh, pray with me? Our Father and our God which are in heaven, God, we thank you. We thank you for your many, many blessings. We thank you, God, that you enabled us to be here on tonight because, God, it could have been the other way. We thank you, God, for how you have kept us throughout the years. Thank you, God, for all your mercy and your grace, God. Thank you, God. It's nothing good that we have done but just your goodness yes. and your loving kindness. God, I ask you to hide me behind the cross. Let them see less of me and more of thee. Oh, God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. 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 I was so thankful when uh, Minister Kent called me and, 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 and invited me. I was just glad to be here. I was disappointed that I couldn't be here on uh, last year. And I, I just thank God for another opportunity. Uh, your theme, who does God say I am? Mm -hmm. Who does God yes, yes. say I am? How many of you have you thought about that? Mm. Have you thought about who does God say I am? Have you thought about how important that is? Who God says you are? Mm -hmm. yes. Have you thought about it truly? Have you looked into it and examined what it means when God says who we are? Yes. When God determines who we are in Him mm -hmm. and in the world. Right. I'm going to come from your scripture, Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 through 29. Please pardon me for having gum in my mouth. I'm on a lot of medication that keeps my mouth dry. Amen. And this is the only thing that I find that works. So just uh, know that I know a proper protocol, but it's something I can't help on tonight. Thank you. Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 through 29. And then we're going to come from Romans chapter 8. Verse 1 and 14 through 15. And our scripture will be coming from the King James Version. And if you don't mind, will you come to your feet as we read God's holy word? Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 through 29. And it reads For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. 
And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Then we go to Romans 8, beginning with verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Yes. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Yes. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, yes. that we may be also glorified together. You may be seen. Who does God say that I am? Who does God say that I am? That's an important thing because in this life we face many battles in our, in our walk in life. We can face many doubts in life. The devil will put doubts in our mind and will use people to do the same. And it's amazing how sometimes those in the church allow God, the, the devil, to use them so easily to bring down the children of God. It's amazing to me how that so easily happens. But you know, when we were growing up as children, we had a habit of calling names. Remember how we used to talk about one another? Uh, we used to get out there and then we'd get with one group and we'd talk about that group and we'd get with that group and, and talk about that group just trying to tear one another down. Uh -huh. All right. But I tell you what, if you think about it and if you're honest about it, it's also done today. Amen. And not only by the children, <laughs> by the adults. Now, and, uh, we do it still, not caring how we hurt and attack one another's character. Yes. We have oh, called God. each other ugly, black, mm -hmm. big nose, mm -hmm. big eye, red, knotted head, knock me, bow leg, stuck up, Ooh. uppity, nasty, spanking, dirty, yes. fat. And there are so, so many more. Yes, yes we have called each other some names. And you know why we as black folk tend to do it to one another? We ought to think. It's been done to us and our ancestors for so long, we ought to rise above it and recognize that we ought to lift each other up. But as we are in the midst of celebrating Black History Month, as African Americans, we have endured some pretty hard name calling from the time they went into Africa and forced many of our ancestors Yes. into these United States. They've been called darky, uh -huh. thing, yes. witch. That's what they call the women, witch, because they use them just like baby factories so they can continue to produce and build their property of a slave. They call the men bucks because they were used for mating. They call them property. Yes. Didn't even consider them human. All right. As we Move along further and slavery ended, we graduated from one name to another. They stopped calling us slaves and we were calling us niggas. Yes. They stopped calling us niggas and started calling us negro. Uh -huh. Then they stopped calling us negro and we were calling us negro. Then Afro-American, African-American continuing to act yes. as we're not a part of this country. African-American as though we are coming to this country uh, 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 as aliens. We didn't come as aliens. We were born here. We are Americans who are black, brown, yellow, red. We were born here. Born here. See, they not only stole our name, they stole our identity, our culture, our ideas, and our creativity. Creativity. They broke down our family structure. Because as they sold and broke up families, 
Looking at today how the black family is broken. Yeah. A lot of times there's not a father in the home. Anybody got a father in the home while we thank God for that father. For that father who stood his ground and stood up and claimed to, and proclaimed to be the man that God called him to be. You ought to be thankful for those fathers who stayed put, who did not yield to what society said about them. Calling them lazy and no good and good for nothing. Some fathers stood up and proved them wrong. Yet we are continuing to be devalued and told that we are not good enough, not smart enough, not astute enough. Sometimes they call you everything but a child of God. But I want you to remember there were three and four uh, young men in the Bible who were taken into Babylon, captivity from, from uh, uh, Judah. And then they began to change their names, these young men, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. All right. Children of Israel, bright children, yes. smart, uh -huh. full of wisdom. Yeah. Oh, they were going to use them for, for their their needs in Babylon. They changed their names to Belshazzar, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But these young men stood firm. They stood their ground because it's not what you call me. You can change my name, but I know who I am. Devil, 
A judge in Israel. Yes. Some say she couldn't be that because she was a woman. She led Israel into battle with Barak. See, men, they try to limit your role. But if God says you are a judge, you are a judge. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. If God calls you, stand. No matter who says, it's not possible. No matter who says, it can't be done. If God calls you out, take a step. Because he's with you. And God knows he won't leave you. Never will he leave you. Amen. Hallelujah, God. Never. See, it does not matter what anyone else says. It is what God says that truly matters. All right. You see, in our text, Paul is letting us know with the arrival of Jesus Christ, the nation of Israel moved out of childhood into adulthood. See, the law was their schoolmaster, pointing them to Christ. But now, Jesus has come. The long period of preparation was over. While there was a certain amount of glory to the law, there was a greater glory in the grace and salvation of God as oh, found yes, in sir. Jesus Christ. Yes. The law could reveal, and to a certain extent, it could control behavior. Mm -hmm. But the law could not do for the sinner yes. what Jesus Christ could do. Yes. The law could not save. Yes. The law could only cover sin, yes. but it could deliver you from sin. All to right. begin with, the law could never justify the guilty sinner. I will not justify the wicked, said the Lord in Exodus 23 and 7. Yet Paul says that God justifies the ungodly, Romans 4 and 5. King Solomon, at the dedication of the temple, reminded God to condemn the wicked and justify the righteous. This was a proper request, considering the holiness of God. The trouble is that nobody was righteous. There was none righteous. No, not one. All our righteousness is as filthy rags. There was none righteous. All right. It is only through faith in Jesus Christ yes. that the sinner is justified, declared righteous before God. Yes. See, you got to accept Jesus. It don't work if you don't accept Jesus. Yes. Right. You can play, you can pretend, uh -huh. you can do all that you want to do. Yes. You can be the best person on earth, given the most that there is. But if you don't have Christ in your life, when you lay down and die, you're going to lift up your eyes in hell. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. And there was something else the law couldn't do. The law could never give us oneness with God. See, with the law, the high priest went in to God on my behalf. I couldn't go to God for myself. All of when Christ came, the veil was rent from top to bottom, giving me access to God. I could go to God for myself. I could stand before him righteously because of what Jesus did at Calvary. Hallelujah, God. Yes. And just think about it. There was a time when the high priest went in. He didn't go in for you and me. Mm -hmm. He went in for the nation of Israel. Uh -huh. We won't count it in the promise. But thank God for Jesus because when Jesus came, it didn't make a difference whether you were Jew or whether you were Gentile, whether you were born or whether you were free. All Jesus said is, I came yes. that you might have life yes. and that more abundantly. Jesus came to save all. For God so loved the world yeah. that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He didn't come just for the Jew. He came for you and me too. Yeah. Aren't you glad about it, all you people? Aren't you glad about it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. See, you made a true son of God by faith in Christ. Only, only Christ can make you a child of God. Yes. Nothing else can do it. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Even an individual Israelite under the law in the Old Testament was never a son. Called Israel, the nation's son. 
They were his chosen people. All right. But the individual was not a son. For example, Moses was on very intimate terms with God, yet God said of him, Moses, my servant, is dead. He didn't say my son. That's right. That's right. That was his epitaph. Also, David was a man after God's own heart, but God called him David, my servant. He didn't call him son. But grace be God, we stand before him today. The children of God, joint as with Christ, with all the blessings and with all the promises that he gave unto Israel. See, my friend, even if you kept the law, which you could not do, your righteousness is still inferior. Yes. As I said, all our righteousness is as filthy rags. Right. Sonship requires the righteousness of Christ. You see, the New Testament tells us, but as many as received them, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, we are given the power, the Greek exousian meaning, the authority, the right. I got a right to be called the child of the king. Amen. I got a right Amen. to stand before you and declare that I am royalty because my father is God Almighty. Yes. And I'm joint heir with the king of kings yes. and the Lord of lords. I got a right. I got the authority to stand before you and declare that I'm a child of God. To become the sons of God. Yes. All we had to do was just trust him. Mm -hmm. Trust in what Jesus did at Calvary. That's right. Your works don't, don't, don't get it for you. Well. You can, can't work your way to heaven. That's right. You can't pay your way to heaven as some folk think. Mm -hmm. Thank God it won't take payment. Some of us wouldn't get even. Because we just don't have it. Thank God it's not dependent on who likes you. Because some of us wouldn't get even. Thank God it's not dependent on how we serve. Because some of us wouldn't get in. But praise be to God. Thank God it only depends on what Christ did at Calvary. And whether you accept him as Lord and Savior. See, I'm telling you right now. Neither your prayers or your fundamental separation, your gifts nor your baptism will ever make you a son of God. Only faith in Christ can make you a son of God. Because you can be baptized. You know, you can go down a dry devil and come up a wet devil. It's your faith in God. You must believe. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Yes, yes, yes. Who does God say that I am? He calls me son. He calls me friend. And I don't have a problem being a female with him calling me son. As long as I'm counting in the number. I don't have a problem with it because I know that it's all inclusive. It's not intended to identify who's female and who's gender. It's just all inclusive. Yes. You're all one in Christ Jesus. What a tremendous claim. The law created differences and distinctions, not only between individuals and nations, mm -hmm. but between various kinds of food, mm -hmm. animals. Jesus came not to divide, mm -hmm. but to unite. Amen. And we're living in a nation today called the United States mm -hmm. of America. But thank God we're not dependent on this president to help us to make it in. Because instead of uniting, instead of for uniting, he is dividing and trying to conquer. But that's all right. It's not up to him. Right. We serve a God who knows all, who hears all, and can take care of all, and he still has the answer to all my God. Amen. See, this, this must have been good to the Galatians because the Judaizers had come in and tried to make them follow the law. But guess what? You don't have to follow the law. The law was written for the nation of Israel. Uh -huh. For the nation of Israel. When we read the Bible, we need to understand who he's talking to. Yes, yes. If he's not talking to you, that doesn't apply to you. 
You have to be able to understand and rightly divide. Yes. Right. The law was for Israel, and if you chose to live among Israel, then you had to agree to follow the law and obey the customs in the land. That was it. But as Gentiles living on the outside, we weren't bound by the law. And as I told the Bible study class today, if you're not a child of God, you're not bound by the words of the Bible. Because you are a child of disobedience. Satan is your father. You listen to your father, I listen to my father who is God Almighty. See, the Pharisees would pray every morning, I thank thee God All right. that I am a Jew, yeah. not a Gentile, a man, not a woman. And a free man and not a slave. But when Christ came, none of that mattered anymore. Because he didn't look at whether I was slave. He didn't look at whether I was free. All he saw was someone that needed a savior. A sinner that needed to be saved. That's all he saw. And he offered me salvation. And all I had to do was accept it. God calls me. His child. Yes. See, your nationality does not make you better than another Christian. All right. See, just because those Jews who accepted Christianity are Christian, don't make them better than me because I'm a Gentile that's a Christian. You know, we got some wealthy, wealthy Christians, and I, I'm one of those that's, that's, that's getting by. I'm going to get by Christian, and I thank God for that. Yes. But it don't make you no better than me. Yes. I'm a Christian that's black. But it don't make the white Christian any better than me. I'm still a child of God just like you are. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, how much money you got. It doesn't matter how, how much I have sinned so long as I ask for forgiveness for my sin. And accept what Christ did at Calvary. See, because I came from nothing, because my life is in a mess, that don't make you a better Christian than me. All right. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Just because some were in slavery, some were free, it don't matter. And I'm going to tell you something else. Sometimes men think they got it going on. They think they're the only ones that God came and died for. But I want to let you know me, that he died for us too. Amen. He set us free too. Amen. You can't limit the work that he can do through me. Because he came for me just like he came for you. And he can work through me, for me, just like he can for you. I'm not trying to take your place. I'm not trying to usurp your authority. I understand how God said Christ, man, woman. I don't have a problem with that. But don't try to limit what God calls me to do. Don't try to hold me back. Let me go on. What the end going to be. Don't get in my way. If you can't help me, don't try to stop me. Just let me be what God has called me to be. Don't have a problem with man being the authority. Love my husband. Live by his command. He is the head of my house. Don't have a problem with that. But God called me to preach. God called me out of the darkness into the marvelous light. Don't try to hinder me. Don't try to hold me back. Just let me go. And let God use me as he pleases. See, because I believe, I believe that God is a just God. And that he makes no mistakes. He can use a woman just like he can use a man. But he didn't tell us that we were to get out of order. That's true. That's true. See, God is also a God of order. There is a place for everybody. Doesn't hinder you from doing the work that God called you to do. But you can still stay in your place. I don't have a problem with that. Because I trust and I serve a, a, a just God, a righteous God, a holy God. A God that knows all. A God that takes care of all. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's immutable. He's all those things. 
So I don't, I don't have to worry about trying to overstep. Just do what he called me to do. He called me to be this, and he called you to be that. And I'm going to let you do and be what God has called you to be, and I'm not going to try to hinder you. All right. I understand the word of God, and I understand order. I understand. We all got a work to do. And we all supposed to come together and get it done. It's time we stop fighting one another. It's time we stop trying to be what God didn't call us to be. It's time we just do what he called us to do. Because God has called me friend. God has called me saved. God has said that I'm a child of God. And as long as I trust him, as long as I trust him, I will be glorified with him. Because yes. I like I said, my son said, I have learned how to suffer. Yes. I have suffered some in this life. Yes. But I don't have a problem with suffering because Christ never told me it was going to be easy. Right. Right. But he did tell me that the world would hate me because it hated him. Yes. Thank you, man. But in the house of God, mm. I'm supposed to be loved. Yes, yes. I'm supposed to be loved. I'm supposed to come here and find protection. I'm supposed to be lifted up, encouraged, built up, not torn down. Because God called me just like he called you. And see, when, when the children see us in the church bickering, it hurts them. Because they begin not to trust. And they begin not to believe because they're wondering, is this what God wants us to be? Is this what God wants us to do? We are to be example that's right, that's right. for the children and the world. They ought to see a difference in us. They ought to see something. When we say, God, hold us. Who does God say that I am? He says I am an ambassador for Christ. I am to represent Christ in the world. All right. When the world sees me, they should see Christ. When the world sees you and you are proclaiming to be a child of God, you they should see Christ. That's right, that's right. Yeah. God has called you to be an ambassador. God has called you to yeah. believe yeah. and be actively transformed mm -hmm. by the renewing of your mind. Yes, yes. And I want you to know something. That once we become children of God, mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about Satan no more. See, God takes care of him for me. Yes. You know, he may try to do things and needle me and pick at me, but guess what? I don't have to fight. That's God's battle. That's God's job. What I have to do is spread the gospel. That's what he called me to do. What I have to do is tell every man, boy, and girl that there is hope. Yes. There is hope in Jesus Christ. Yes. Because that's what God says I am. I am. I am. I am a child of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but have received the spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. He is my Father. I am his child. I am forgiven who have delivered us from the power of darkness. And has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Yes. And I'm not worried because he said I am sealed unto the day of redemption. That's right, that's right. I don't have to worry about my salvation. I just need to do what he has called me to do. I don't need to go to the cross but one time. I went, took care of my business, and now I'm out here in service to the Lord. All right. I am redeemed yes. from the curse of the law. I don't have to live by the law. I don't have to haul a lamb, a bull, or nothing. No way. Jesus' blood has covered me. Jesus' blood has protected me. Jesus' blood has set me free. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. When I stand before God. Because of what Christ did at Calvary. Yes. I'm going to be holy. Yes. I'm going to be pure. Yes. And I'm going to be without limits. Because Jesus 
has taken care of me. He said, I am blessed mm -hmm. with all spiritual blessings. Right. All that I need is already in my hand. I just got to learn how to use it. I got to learn how to work it. I got to learn how to speak those things into existence. God has empowered me to walk by his spirit. I got gifts. I got talents. But I got power from God Almighty. I got to learn how to use it and make it work for me. And guess what? So do you. I am strong in the Lord and the power of his might. He told me to put on the whole arm of God that I might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He can try anything he wants to, but he can't defeat my God, my Christ, the one who died at Calvary. I am not moved by what I see. See, things may not look good right now, we got a president that don't seem to care about the poor, the needy, or nothing. But guess what? I walk by faith, not by sight. I'm not dependent on me. I'm dependent on God who has supplied all of my needs according to his riches in glory. I don't have to worry about what the president was going to do. I don't have to worry about it because I know what God said he will do. All right. Who does God who has God said you are? Yes, yes, yes. See, there was a young man in England who committed suicide mm. because he did not like his self-image. Mm. He did not like what he saw. Mm. How he defined himself when he looked in the mirror, he did not like what he saw of himself. Mm. And he committed suicide. You think about how many people today are committing suicide mm. because they have not bothered to seek out who God says they are. Amen. Don't allow people to define you. Don't allow yourself to define you. Don't allow Satan to define you. Only listen to what God has said. That's right. That's right. And I want you to know something. The other night, I was watching the docudrama Who Killed Malcolm X. And Malcolm X was a great orator, a great speaker. He wanted to be a lawyer. He was very smart. When his father was killed, his mother kind of, kind of had some emotional problems and was committed. So he was placed in a foster home. He went to school, to an all-white school. He was only black in his class. And he told his teacher that he wanted to be a lawyer. And she told him that no one would hire him to be a lawyer. She told him he was good with his hands, so he should become a carpenter. See, this discouraged Malcolm X and broke his spirit. And we know that he ended up in, in, in a wealth of crime in prison because his spirit was broken. But I believe if somebody had told Malcolm X when he was that young boy, that little boy, about a baby born in Bethlehem, wrapped in swallowed clothing, Lying in a manger who grew up to become a carpenter, preached to the lost, healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, made the lame to walk, the deaf to, to, to hear, the mute to talk. See, one day this carpenter, whose name was Jesus the Christ, was with all night long, had a crown of all place on his head.
God calls us. Amen. Who does God say I am? He said, I am more than a conqueror through him that loves me. Truly, truly, God is our all and our all. I don't care what the school tells your children. I don't care what they say you can and what you cannot do. I don't care if they say you're not meeting this test or that test. Who does God say you are? What does God say you can do? Who has God called you to be? If you trust and you believe, I guarantee you, he will give you everything you need. It's already there. You just got to learn how to use it and learn how to make it work for you. He has given it. All that we need is available. Just grab hold and keep on trusting in Jesus holy and righteous name. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done.
there's a lot more that you have to deal with than I had to deal with when I was a child. It's true. It's coming at you faster and harder than we ever imagined when we were growing up. But you've got to be willing to be set upon. You've got to be willing to be that example that God uses. You've got to be that light shining in the darkness, leading others to Christ. See, when you're in school, there's still time to be holy. When you are around your friends, there's still time to be holy. There's still time to be a child of God. There's still time to let people know who you are and who you are. See, don't let them change you. You change them. When they come to you and try to encourage you to do something that's wrong, you talk about you talk to them about how Jesus can help them to do things right. You be that light that leads others to Christ. Let us pray. Oh Heavenly Father, we come to you right now. Knowing God that we are living in perilous times. But God, you sit high and you look low. And you know all about it. You know what we need. You know how we need it, and you know when we need it, God. You look at these children, and you proclaim that they are yours, God. They are yours, and you have built an edge of protection all around them, God, that no devil can pluck them out of your hand, God. You protect them, God. You keep them, God, and you're keeping care, God. You love them, God. You nurture them, God. But God, empower them. Empower them and help them to stand in the face of the things that are, are lurking at our young children today. Uh, we talked about monsters under the bed and monsters in the closet. But God, now there are monsters in the classroom. There are monsters in the school. Monsters in the playground. God, they are facing a lot of tough and terrible things. But God, we know that you are able. Able to take care of them and to keep them. Because you said they are sealed up to the day of redemption. Help them to be strong. Help them to walk in faith, God. Help them to lead others unto you. Let them know that they're not too young to be that beacon. They're not too young, God, to be that word that someone needs to hear. They're not too young, God, to be that prayer that someone needs, God. They're not too young, God, to be that hand that somebody needs, God. They are your workmanship. They're just a little younger than your old folks, God. But God, you can still use them and you still choose to use them. Let them know, God, that they belong to you. That they are yours. They are protected. They are covered. Jesus' blood did for them exactly what it did for us. They have power. They walk in your anointing. Help them, God, to remain strong and faithful and true to who they are in you and who you desire them to be. Lead them and guide them in a right path. We believe you, God, and we trust you, God. And we know, God, that if they hear the word, the word will order their steps and direct them to thy path. And they will be who you can use in these last and evil days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. I'm sorry, before Pastor Williams comes, I'm going to turn hands on this. Truly give up my Lord, Savior Jesus Christ again. We thank each and every one for coming out tonight. We want to thank Evangelist Knight Amen. and her church family for coming to help us celebrate and to give us the word of this youth revival. I said it's good to be able to hear the word and for the young people to know that they have a place in the house of the Lord also. Uh, we thank, uh, we also want to thank uh, the young man that solo is tonight yeah. for singing for us. Yeah. We want to thank, we do want to thank uh, my friend over there who's videotaping. Mm. Uh, we thank God for him coming out to be like, We just thank each and every one that has come to help support our young people. Um, of this youth revival. Thank God for our presider. Amen. We also do want to thank our our community choir for bringing us Amen. the music. Yeah. Uh, the music 
And the fact that tonight, I can always tell your pastor that you did an awesome job. And we thank you for allowing me to come and to preach the word of God tonight. Just thank each and every one again. And if, if anything that you, uh, you need us for anything, please don't hesitate to call. And uh, we'll be willing to serve. We can't make it the first time, though. Don't give up on us. Just give us another opportunity. And we really appreciate you um, accepting this invitation. I said, good. God's good. He allowed you to come back again so that we can hear you again. Enjoy the word when you came uh, two years ago. Yes. I said, I said, I look forward to seeing and hearing you again on another year revival. If all, if, if all goes well. And I think that's all I have to say. I'm about to lose my voice. And uh, well, again, we thank everyone for coming out. And uh, like I said, if anything we can do for you, Anderson Chapel, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Amen. Amen. Let's church say amen. amen. What an awesome word amen. on tonight. Amen. amen. Thank God for the one of God uh, coming and sharing with us. Amen. Who does God say? that we are. Amen. And we can make it personal. Who do God say I am? Amen. Amen. We yes. thank God that he stood and just taught us and preached to us tonight. Amen. And I like what you said about black history. Amen. Uh, 45, he don't care nothing about us or anybody they want to uh, criticize him. Amen. But you know, I, I told him Sunday, amen, this world is coming to an end. And God knows what he's doing. Yes, he he knows exactly what he's doing. There's certain things that got to happen before this world comes to the end. And he put people in place to make it happen. Amen. So don't worry about 45, as he said. Just keep your faith in God. And he will work it out. I like to say, I know it's all right. Yeah. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank you. Tonight for that powerful message on tonight. Amen. Young man that sang the song, he just didn't sing it long enough. Mm. Thank God for him. All oh, Anderson Chapel. Thank you, Holy Temple. Amen. Me, of course, everybody that's here in your Thank God for our usher. Amen. Thank God for our usher. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. As she preached, I wanted to stand up, but I can't stand up on my feet too long. And it takes me a while to get up. Amen. But I, she, she, she brought some good stuff. Yes. Amen. Amen. And she was preaching. I consider myself preaching it on four Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so the same thing. But we just thank God. Amen. We're living in the last days. And if you don't know Jesus, you need to have a personal relationship with him. Amen. I feel like my brother on this past Saturday, uh, Saturday and I let the church know him, and I let my family and everybody know him. And if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, amen. And I want two places we can go up or down. Amen. But we just thank God. Thank you again, Dr. Knight, for coming and sharing with us tonight. May the Lord bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Here's our prayer. All right, we're going to put it back in the hand that she had the last saying and give the benediction. Let's not forget next week, Wednesday through Friday, Convocation, Goldsboro. And that Friday is uh, uh, also don't forget the banquet. Right, amen. Yeah. Media Conference. That's okay. On that Tuesday night, they got the. Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Yeah. Missionary retreat. Missionary retreat at our faith temple and most of the rest of it at in Goldberg in our headquarters of Love Temple. All right, God bless you. Thank you again for having me back and giving me the opportunity 
uh, to share in God's word with you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Williams, for allowing me to, to come back. Uh, it's, it's a privilege when a pastor allows you to grace his pulpit because the pastor is the protector of his flock and he has to be watchful as to who he allows to enter and who he allows to speak unto his people because they may bring things that are not of God. And he's protecting his flock, so he has the right to say, though no, you cannot enter my pulpit and speak to my people. So when a pastor allows you to grace his pulpit, that's a wonderful privilege. Wonderful privilege. Uh, if all hearts and minds are clear, I uh, ask you to stand and look to the Lord to be dismissed. Thankful to uh, my son for singing that solo. Like I said, he knows that's my favorite song. Um, I got a niece back there who could have um, cut, cut, cut us, uh, uh, a note or two as well. But she's sitting back there holding the baby. She's looking around like she don't want nobody to know. But I got a niece that's a great songstress. <laughs> thank God for her. Uh, just thank God for being here. Now let us look to the Lord to be dismissed. Lord, we thank you for all that has been said and done in this place, God. Let us not take our word and, and cast it aside. Let us plant it in our hearts and use it, God. Let us uh, uh, learn to live by it and carry out our lives so that others will come crying, what must I do to be saved? We represent you in this world, God, and we need to honor you and serve you as the king that you are. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory, with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Go in peace and love one another.